to all governments and officials of the world. Already on the 5th of July, 1951, and the 25th of August, 1958, I sent warnings to governments and other world leaders about what was going to happen on Earth in the future, in all relations of climate, and man and his actions. They were warnings concerning predictions, which have since been fulfilled in a frighteningly complete manner. My warning was based on an absolutely reliable source regarding the predictions made about the future of Europe and the whole world. These predictions had nothing to do with prophecies, because they were based on a forecast of the real future, which showed the following. In a few years, the climatic conditions in Europe and throughout the world were changed so drastically through human fault that global warming as a result of the greenhouse effect caused extreme storms of all kinds to appear in such a way that they caused enormous material damage to land. Houses, other buildings, roads, mountains, railway tracks, torrents, streams, rivers, and lakes. Throughout the world, there have been tremendous storms, typhoons, tornadoes and hurricanes, ice, rain and snowstorms, as well as tremendous droughts, floods, landslides, tremendous forest fires, earthquakes and sea quakes, tsunamis and volcanic eruptions. And all of this will continue and get worse. Hundreds of thousands of lives have already been lost as a result of these climate-related upheavals and storms, and millions of deaths will continue to be lost because in the coming period, we will see even more rapid and increasing climate warming and climate change, which is already unstoppable. Already in the 1950s, I warned, but that does not mean the end of the events, because when the new millennium has arrived, nature will rebel even further and more powerfully against the environmentally destructive madness of mankind and reach a level that will remind us of the primeval times of the earth. If the whole climate disaster and the coming events resulting from the climatic change are considered and analyzed, then the earthly future looks bleak. However, very few responsible people still want to admit that mankind itself is largely responsible for the coming disaster and chaos as well as for all catastrophes of all kinds, and that about 75% of them are to blame. Although the looming catastrophe has already become apparent in strong forms and visible to realists, there are still pathologically stupid, as well as irresponsible know-it-alls, governments and scientists, etc., who still antagonistically claim the opposite. And the fact that the real cause of all the evils existing on Earth in every respect is recognized and something useful is done about it, is all the more a factor that is not recognized. Because the stupidity of not recognizing and not understanding the effective factors of truth and reality is just as great as the rejection of the only effective and radical measure, which is based on a drastic limitation or reduction of overpopulation through a regulation of a worldwide birth stop or a rigorous birth regulation. It should finally become clear to all rulers authorities, scientists, and other responsible persons on Earth, as well as to humanity on Earth, what the main cause of all evils and disasters on our world is. But to understand and accept this, a sound mind is needed, just as a sound reason is needed to take the most urgent, rigorous, and radical measures to counteract environmental and world destruction. But the same reason is needed to get rid of all misery, misery, epidemics, criminality, and crimes as well as child sexual abuse, child abuse of any form, as well as prostitution of all kinds, which is degenerating more and more. The same applies to the oppression and exploitation of women. Hatred, vengeance, and the desire for revenge, religious and political fanaticism and delusion, racial and xenophobia, ideological and state military terror, but also in relation to the worldwide natural disasters, the rapidly advancing global warming and climate change, air pollution and environmental destruction, etc., etc., for which overall countermeasures must be worked out and taken. But this can only be useful when the basic evil of all evils is finally recognized and effective countermeasures are taken. This basic evil, however, does not want to be recognized and fought by all high and higher responsible persons on Earth, nor by individual people of the earthly population. The main reason for this negation lies in the supposed freedom of man to do what he pleases, and to do it without consideration of losses or without 
consideration of the fact that through this false freedom of self-decision with regard to the fulfillment of one's own wishes and drives, etc., the climate and the world is shaken to its foundations and slowly but surely destroyed. The fundamental evil of all evils and catastrophes is based on the factor of overpopulation. Because overpopulation alone is to blame for all destruction, not only for global warming and environmental destruction, but also for all human degeneration, energy, and water shortages, and all other evils. The ever-increasing open prostitution and crime, the problem of asylum seekers and refugees, neo-Nazism and all other problems, large and small, are also due to overpopulation. And when lunatics, such as the Pope and other irresponsible people, plead, go and multiply, such elements equate themselves with ideological or religious terrorists and fanatics, as well as with state and war criminals, alias those with state power and their vassals, who murder, in the name of their country, the alleged security and freedom, as well as the alleged fight against terror, and have them murdered by their military and secret services. In fact, in view of the rampant overpopulation and the resulting global evils, insoluble problems and blatantly increasing disasters among humans and in nature, climate and the planet, it is an unprecedentedly despicable crime to advocate procreation rather than to stop it in a controlled manner and only allow procreation when the law allows it. However, irresponsible people who nevertheless demand or even advocate reproductive madness or who do not prevent it in a responsible manner by means of authoritative laws should be punished extremely severely, which also affects the rulers as well as every single person in the population. This seems to be a blatant measure and an intrusion into the private life of the individual, which is always put forward by ignorant and egoistic people as a defense of privacy. This may be so in a certain sense, but this privacy must be abandoned in relation to a rigorous and controlled birth stop if the earthly world is to be maintained as a functioning planet and if terrestrial humanity is ultimately to survive. So, out of pure reason and logic, a certain amount of privacy must be given up for the survival of humanity and a functioning planet, as well as the selfishness of the supposed right to do as one pleases. If this does not happen, then it can already be foreseen today that the final destruction of planet Earth and the downfall of earthly mankind or its miserable vegetation is only a matter of time. That is why it is necessary that each individual takes his responsibility in every respect and also restricts the rights of his private sphere with regard to descendants. If any problems are tackled and solutions are worked out, then these, when they come about, are already outdated again and condemned to nullity. Because during the time when they are worked out and created as a final project, they are already outdated again and to a great extent insufficient. Because in the time from the planning and up to the final product, the Earth's population has again increased by hundreds of millions of humans. Consequently, the products created to alleviate the problems are already tremendously outdated again and again, require new projects. So there are more and more progressive and endless problems whereby one hole is plugged with a new hole, and so every problem causes two new problems. Against this and against all other evils, harsh, drastic measures have to be taken, as well as against the world domination addicted machinations of the state powers, which cause wars all over the world, wage wars themselves, and plunge other countries into chaos and want to break and eradicate their mentality, religion, and politics. And because of the rapidly growing number of mankind, it is forced to exploit and destroy the environment and the earth more and more often, and more to meet the increasing needs of all kinds. These needs are increasing with the growing number of humanity, whereby nature and the entire environment are more and more affected and destroyed, which of course has had a devastating and destructive effect on the climate for a long time. The planet itself is tormented because atomic and other explosions disturb the structure of the Earth and cause earthquakes. Waters, nature, atmosphere, and the space close to the Earth are polluted. The primeval forests are destroyed and devastated for profit, and the Earth's resources are exploited irresponsibly. 
The commandment of the hour in the future is the madness of overpopulation growth must be drastically stopped and stopped. But this can only be done through rigorous global measures for a controlled halt to births, which must also be accompanied by decisive clarification of the situation, and which requires that only offspring be conceived if the social and all human conditions are in order and no factors are to be expected, which are contrary to human dignity, the social system, social norms, and the security of society, humanity, the planet, the environment, and the individual, etc., etc. Therefore, a worldwide and controlled birth stop must be used to reduce the world population to a reasonable level, because only in this way can the increasing needs and the destruction associated with them ultimately be eliminated. The number of the earthly world population should not exceed 529 million humans by law of nature, because for this number, an abundant supply is guaranteed by the planet. Even a figure translated three times, that is to say 1.6 billion 1 600,000 thousand, would still be acceptable and bearable for the planet and its nature, but nothing more. Time is hurrying and is becoming scarce, so quick action is called for, and this is your responsibility. You who sit in governments and other responsible offices, or you who are working as scientists and now know what is necessary to do to bring the future, life, and the whole world back into balance, even if it will take a very, very, very long time and will take centuries, always provided that in useful and still foreseeable time, the mentioned necessary measures are taken and enforced. You who are responsible, act now because the clock has run out. And consequently, all that remains is to start a new beginning in reason, reason, and logic. Otherwise, the final catastrophe will be inevitable. Pass this warning onto your successors, because their duty is the same as yours, and that of every single person on earth, to act within the framework of the necessary necessity to protect, preserve and lead the land and the earth, and all that exists and was created by man into a healthy, good and positive future, as well as all that has been gained, all nature, the planet and its climate, the body and life of all humans and all animals that crawl and fly on earth. Billy Edward Albert Meyer, Simiasse Silver Star Center, 8495 Hintersch Madridi, Switzerland.